Hello everyone and welcome to Bobbin Talk. In this video, I will show you how you can make your own patterns utilizing the shape tools in Close 3D. Let's start by having the 2D and the 3D window here open. We will work primarily in the 2D window because the tools that we need are in the 2D window. We will start by using the shape tools polygon and all of the tools that are nested underneath that would be polygon a rectangle ellipse and spiral let's start with the polygon tool i will open just the 2d window and we will focus on the shape of my avatar i have the polygon tool in my hand and with this tool you can click and create a point or a segment point and then keep clicking and creating other points to create the shape that you want. Each time I click, I create a new segment point and the segment that corresponds to that. So I could simply click around and I am going for half a pattern and I can close the shape by left clicking once on the very first point. You can see that in the 2D window, I now have this particular pattern and let's take a look what it looks like in the 3d window you can see that the pattern that you created in the 2d window also appeared in the 3d window and i can see that it is positioned exactly where i have positioned it in the 2d window in relations to the avatar so for my avatar here i have it on her left side and it is also positioned on her left side here in the 3d window it also automatically comes up with the gizmo tool so that I could adjust the position of that pattern piece. For example, I can grab with the gizmo tool and bring it a little bit closer and utilize all the functions for the gizmo tool. That means that if I grab on any of the arrows, I can move it in that direction, left and right for the red arrows, up and down for the green arrow, I could also rotate it depending on how I use the gizmo tool. If you follow these steps, you have created now your very first pattern piece in Close 3D. So we're still with the polygon, which has a shortcut H. So you could just hit H on your keyboard and have that particular pattern tool in your hand. Let's go back to the 2D window and see what else we can do with the polygon tool. We have established that you can just left click once and then again and create your own pattern lines or segments as they're called in Close 3D. But what happens if you make a mistake? So let's say this particular point is now a mistake for me. You could simply hit backspace or delete the Mac and it will delete the very last point that you created. You can see that I still have this tool in my hand, but watch this particular point, click delete, and that point disappears. You could delete the last point and then continue again in making your perfect pattern piece. Now, what happens if you want to create a perfect line or you want to work along a line that you want? So you can hold the shift tool and you can see that that locks the guides for you. So now you can choose to go along any of these vertical or horizontal line and Claw will keep you perfectly along that line. I could go into the diagonal lines, horizontal or vertical, and I know that I'm making a perfectly straight line. Next thing you can do is right click and that will give you this drop down box and you can choose your particular length. So for example, I can make sure that this exact line is exactly, let's say eight inches instead of 8.6. You can see that the length change here. So watch here, this orange line, I'm gonna change this to six and see how this eight will change to six. Well, actually I hit 86, so it went much longer, but let's delete the eight. Now watch this line, it added to it with this yellow. I'm gonna delete up here the eight, so it goes down to six. And you can see that the previous line was eight. So this extra purple segment here indicates the previous length of the line. The new length is six, 
it's basically asking me if I am happy with this line. And if I am, I can click OK. And you can see that you can still continue to create your pattern piece. That did not get interrupted. But this particular segment line is exactly 6 inches, millimeters, centimeters, whatever your measurements are. We could also work this in conjunction with the shift button. So let's say I am holding the shift. I get my log guides and I do want to go vertical, but I can also right click along that line. And I have both. I have the log guides, plus I have this drop down box here that is asking me what exactly do I want to do in terms of length. And maybe this time I want to have a very long line. I'm going to click 15. It's showing me where this line will end up. It's showing me that it is 15 inches in my case here. And then it's asking me if that's okay with me. I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to see how this line ended up here. I'm going to have to click Shift again to release. And then if I wanted to, I can now come back to my very first point, left click in it and complete the pattern piece. Now let's delete these last two pattern pieces and take a look at what other options we had in that pop up window. So I'm going to delete this one too. And I'm going to go back to H shortcut, which is my polygon tool. And I'm going to go back just to my 2D window so that you can see this larger. This time, I will left click once right in the middle. And as I am ready to do my next point, I really want to do a curve point. So I have two different options here. One of them is I can go to the end of this segment, left click hold and drag the point so I get my Bezier curves and that will allow me to create this curve point. Then I can come back to my point to get rid of this particular Bezier point and I can continue to make my pattern piece. I'm going to left click for a perfectly straight segment here. Then again for my armhole I would like to have a curved line so I'm going to left click once, hold and drag to get the perfect curved point for my armhole. Again, if I leave it like this, the next segment will also be curved. If I don't want this curve here, I can backtrack and left click once on this point so I can get a perfectly straight segment now. So I'm going to go to her waistline, then come back to the middle and see when I go exactly below that middle point, I get this purple vertical line which alerts me that I will have a perfect alignment if I left click there so that I can close this particular pattern piece. I'm going to left click back into my initial point and I now have a more appropriate half front pattern piece, except I didn't really leave any space for seam allowance, nor did I really account for going around the body but we're just learning how to create the initial pattern pieces. So this is fine for me. And again, this place, the pattern piece right in front of her with a little bit of space. I could bring it closer and I can now continue to work with these patterns. Now let's take a look of what is the next way we can create a curve point. I'm going to left click once for my first point, And then when I'm ready to create a curved area, I'm going to hold the command key on my Mac keyboard, I'm going to left click and hold. And as I'm holding the command key and left click holding, I am also dragging my mouse until I get the perfect curve. And then I'm going to release the command key and release my left click. And I have this curve point that I can still manipulate until I'm perfectly happy. And wherever I am ready to place my next point, I will simply left click once and that will lock this curved segment here. You can see that this point is now red, which signifies that this is a curved point. From here on, we continue exactly as before. I'm going to left click once to create a perfectly straight segment. I'm going to left click once. Even if I come to this point here and I left click in it, it's still not going to join these two patterns. You have to join them in a different way. 
but I'm going to use that as a guide. So I create the same exact pattern dimensions here. So I'm going to left click here in this point. And here again, I want to have a curve. So I'm going to hold my command key, left click once, and then you can release the command and drag and hold the left until you're ready. Or you can release the command key, release the left click and just curve until you're happy with this particular shape. I'm going to shape it a little bit more than before. Let's say this is where I want it to be. I'm going to left click when I'm happy with this curve and then come back here, left click into the initial point to close this pattern. Now I'm going to come back to my transform pattern tool and I'm going to select this whole pattern and move it to show you that this did not join these two particular patterns together. But we could do that in a different way. Now, if you're happy with these two pattern pieces and you do want to merge them into one cohesive single pattern piece, you would need to come to your edit pattern tool and you will select the two segments that you want to join or merge together. You're going to click on the first one. You're going to hold shift and then click on the next one. And you can see that they're both highlighted. And then you can right click in that area and just select merge that will merge these two pattern pieces into one single pattern piece. You can see that this is now one pattern piece and we can see it as one pattern piece, but just placed in two different areas here. Now let's go back to our 2D pattern pieces. And obviously this pattern piece is not symmetric. What if you wanted to create a perfectly symmetric pattern piece from the very beginning? So I'm going to delete this. Let's start by going horizontal a little bit and then click mirror select. And here you can select which axis. How do you want this to be symmetric? Is it local X or Y? So if I select local, I can now mirror this exactly as it is along the vertical line. So I'm going to left click here around the shoulder. I'll give a little bit of space so I know it can go around the shoulder and then continue to build my pattern piece. And everything else is still exactly the same. I could still hold the command, left click once, create a curve point and click here and then create a straight segment point. I could also hold shift and follow my locked guides and use those and select mirror pieces. I could also right click and give a particular length or use any of the other tools that we have learned so far. When you're ready and finished with the pattern piece, you can left click in the middle to join the two pattern pieces and you now have a perfectly symmetric pattern piece. So the polygon tool is basically your free form drawing tool for the 2D window. But under that same tool, you have nested three other tools. One of them is the rectangle, which is a shortcut S. And this one works exactly as you would think it does. You can left click and drag to create a rectangle in any shape, or you can do a square, especially if you hold the shift button that will allow you to keep dragging and creating a bigger or smaller, perfect rectangle. And once you release your left button, this will create the rectangular piece and you can immediately see it in the 3D window as a pattern piece ready to simulate. Let's go back to the 2D window. With the rectangular tool, you have one more option. You can left click once and that will give you a pop-up window in which you can predetermine and you can input particular width, height. So for the width, let's say I can put five inches. For the height, let's say I can input seven inches or let's make it actually 10 so we can see the difference better click OK. And now I have a five by 10 rectangular pattern piece, which also appeared perfectly lined up in the 3D window. The ellipse tool works in a similar fashion. 
that is a shortcut E. You can left click, hold, and then drag to create whatever ellipse you would like. You could hold the shift to create a perfect circle. And I will keep dragging until I am happy with my shape and then release both the shift in this case and the left button. And again, in the 2D window, I can see my circular pattern piece created and I can position it where I want. I could also in the same way, just left click once in the 2D window, input predetermined diameter, radius, circumference, whatever I would like this to be. I can also here replicate the shapes and let's say create two or three of them. You can see that they're popping up in the window and you can predetermine the interval, the angle at which they appear. I'm going to make these a bit bigger so you can see them. Width and height is the same here. Because these are now 22 inches, but the interval is only three inches, so now they're overlapping. If these are two inch big with three inch in between, you can see that they are obviously at a distance to each other. So I have five of these shapes. Click OK. And I can zoom out and see that I have five of these shapes perfectly created. The last tool here is the spiral. Spiral is a tricky tool that I don't use much, if ever, but you could create some interesting shapes. Maybe this can come in handy when you're creating a big skirt, for example. And here you can input specific distance for uh, the width, the length, the inner radius. Maybe this is smaller. Maybe the length is much bigger. So you can play around with these, including the direction of which the spiral would be spiraling. And then click OK as you're happy with the shape. So these are all of the pattern pieces nested here into shape tools. Polygon, which is your free form shape creation, rectangle, ellipse, and spiral. These tools give you the capability to create whatever patterns you would like in the 2D window. Thank you for listening. Consider subscribing to Bobbin Talk and let me know if you have any questions or any suggestions for new videos.